seriously don't know i checked all the things but i don't know where to start and what to look into a health check always start with a health check okay so this is the kind of a home page for this report so this this comes up with some default observation and recommendations in fact not even recommendation these are only few observations it's not it's not really feasible and good to apply each and everything what it actually noticed right because that's that's why they use the term observation and not a recommendation right so because what if you go and check at id 9 so it says table has 12 indexes with dop different than its table so that means you have table maybe of uh, with the, its default degree maybe your you know your default degree and uh, you have 12 indexes with a separate degree right maybe higher than the mm -hmm. default degree so okay. that can cause some really you know uh, massive performance issues like for imagine a situation you have a table which is there with its default degree but you have indexes where you set dop or degree as 6 right mm -hmm. and every time when any sql comes and hit and uses those uh, uh, indexes it will always go for a parallel scan for parallelism mm -hmm. because the indexes are there with the parallelism, so they always the it uh, the optimizer always prefer to use uh, the degree clause or the DOP if it's set on any of the objects. So, uh, in case where you have a CPU scarcity or a shortage, and you have DOP set unnecessary on it on an index, so that will cause some really massive performance degradations. Because what happens is like sometimes in order to create a index uh, quickly, so we always use degree. Right or a parallel clause basically like create index index name and then parallel at the end. So what happens like uh, it will create the index fast, of course, but it the, the degree will be altered and you have a new set of a degree created on the top of the index. So any anytime you made such modification or you add any index and in order to speed up things, you add parallelism. The best thing is revert back or roll back the degree if it's not necessary. Otherwise, you'll face some other challenges. It, it, it's it's a, is it a thumb rule that means if the degree of table is one or suppose uh, five, so the uh, indexes degree should not be more than that. What it says is table has a degree of parallelism of one. That's a default degree of a uh, mm -hmm. table, right? So that means table is with its default degree, but index are actually not. So they have degree maybe two, three, but not the default, right? So that is why it's recommended to have the the default degree. Okay. Okay, so so you get it to the point number nine because the priority is one. Exactly. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, what else I have to look into this? Uh, if you check, uh, find out why statistics are wrong. Okay, scroll it down. I mostly see like uh, it's actually highlighting the degree difference that you have between your table and the indexes. Right, and also have this 83 again. Do not go with the priority, by the way. But yeah, this was something uh, catchy, so that immediately caught my eye. Otherwise, I usually do not prefer to go with the priority, right? Because if you see a task 20 at the second last of this observation list, table has st stale statistics, right? So this FSM dot task underscore resource, you need to go and check like if this if the stats are really outdated and what is uh, the row size and how how important this table is and if if it's going for any full table scan and what is uh, the uh, the data distribution if there are any um, uh, histograms created or not i mean there is there is a separate approach what you can adopt right it again depends as i told you it's just a set of few observations do not go and try to apply everything what you notice or what is highlighted here in the sheet no uh, and next, uh, if you go down, like uh, it provides you some table summary as well. Like this is a, this in total six tables were referenced in that SQL, right? And mm -hmm. those has the uh, it within this table you you can see the number of rows, table sample size, last analyze, number of indexes each table has, average index sample size, table column, column with histograms, and average column sample size as well. And accordingly, uh, I mean, uh, and at, at the same time you have index summary as well, right? So you have hmm. a complete list of indexes uh, which are there. So, so you need not to go and query. So what is catching your eye means here? Uh, which thing we need to look into it means the okay, in example, last analyze? When when exactly you, you have generated this report? Ye yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday was right. uh, 5th, 5th, 5th of December, right? Uh, so 5th then, Jan. yeah, 5th of 
Uh, oh yeah, 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 correct. So of course, yeah, if you check the last analyzed date, there are few tables which are which have really old statistics, right? 14th December, 2nd of December, uh, in fact, 2nd of January too, right? So yes, that is something uh, which I'll go and check. And also the, uh, the number of rows as well, like if the table size is big and last analyze uh, date is, uh, is few days old, so then it's OK, right? And it's acceptable sometimes because it's not possible to generate status over a huge table uh, that frequently, right? Mm -hmm. So, yep. Yeah. And next thing in that index summary, if you go and check table name, uh, C underscore place underscore uh, EXT, and we've got this C place EXT P1. And uh, the plan is in memory, and uh, you've got both plans available in memory and AWR report. Give me a second. Yeah. OK, and uh, what else? Column with histograms. Yeah. And apart from this, I mean, uh, this SQL HC report has got other HTML reports too. So can you please go back to the that directory? Yeah, now if you go and check the diagnostic part, yeah, diagnostic. Uh, you need to go and uh, click on the C. Uh, yeah, correct. Scroll it down. Scroll down. Yeah, execution plan summary. Yeah, scroll down a bit. So this this SQL has only single plan hash value. That is three eight nine something, right? And average elapsed time uh, is two seconds. Two and seconds. out of two seconds, it spent almost ninety nine or ninety eight percent of its time waiting on the CPU, right? And uh, average buffer gets. R14014, that's not that enough. Total executions during the AWR retention period was 68357, right? And and total child cursors were two. And first load time and last load time, it's also important. Like what was the very first time when this query was, uh, was passed, right? And what was the last load time, right? So it's important to know. And what else? I think mm. this depends on the AWR report retention now. We have 30 days. I think that's why it is coming. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's right. Uh, scroll it down. Uh, okay, historical plan summary. Scroll a bit down. Scroll down. Yeah, this is the historical SQL statistics. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Scroll down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just hold, hold on, hold on. I'm so sorry. I mean, go at the top. I mean, where does this specific section starts? Yeah. A bit, bit, bit up. Sorry. Yeah. So what it says, historical SQL statistics, the delta. So the query, I mean, as per this report, was the this SQL was very first time executed on 2021-1206 at 1.30. Right. What is your AWR retention? I think it's 30 minutes, right? 30 that is days, yeah. 30 minutes interval. Mm -hmm, not the retention. It's it's 30 minutes, right? So every 30 minutes you have your new snap created, correct? Mm, correct. So that is why you see 130, then two, and then two, two thirty, and then three, right? That is why. So, uh, so the very first time the SQL was executed at uh, 130 on uh, 6th of December, right? And uh, during that period of 30 minutes, 524 executions were happened, right? And using plan hash value 38928669740, right? Mm -hmm. So that is what uh, rows rows processed is also an important column. Ex immediately rows after processed. direct writes, yeah, rows processed. Like how many rows the SQL when it got executed processed? But again, this is not for the single execution, by the way, because this is a sum or the cumulative value of the overall execution that happened during that period. So within that 30 minutes. 524 executions were happened and those 524 executions in in total processed 549 rows. Okay, correct. And this is the total execution time of 524 Absolutely. executions. Yes, for, for, for 524. So if you want to get the average, you need to just do the divide. That's it. You do this, do, do some math. Correct and scroll it down. Then it also got some, uh, you know, uh, weight event specific information too, but at the this, uh, scroll it down. Not oh, here. Okay. okay. Down. Okay. Yeah. Go down. Furthermore, yeah. About. 
Yes. So basically, it's primarily weights on the CPU, right? And uh, also weights on the PGA memory operation. So that means it do some kind of a sorting uh, operation. Or is this some kind of uh, is this part of the direct load or a conventional load? Uh, a conventional workload, by the way, because if it is, then of course PGA memory operation is something that is expected here. Right, but, but yeah, it is only yes. for in one of the snaps only, I think. But still, I mean, it, it frequently I think uh, uh, each time it process an, uh, only a single row, not more than one or two rows, because within a period of 30 minutes, 524 something execution happened and almost similar number of rows I can see. Right, so I think on an average it processes only one to two rows, not more yeah. than that. I do not bank on that value. That is only the snap count, not the number of rows, by the way. What you just highlighted. So PG or memory operation. So only one instance was actually was seen. But yeah, most of the time, it uh, this the uh, this report actually observed this frequently waits on the CPU. CPU. Correct. Right. <clears throat> so that's it. I mean, that's how uh, there is one more important uh, report. Go back to the directory of your SQL HC. Then uh, execution plan. If you want to know about all of the execution plan, right? So you can go and check. So this is the very first execution plan for this instance, uh, which is basically a child zero plan. Scroll it down. Scroll down, scroll down. No, oh, it's a very big execution plan. It's at first. Keep scroll down. Yeah, this is uh, what what is? OK, this is this saying this is the current execution plan. That's it. Yeah. So in short, I mean, this uh, this SQL has only single plan hash value or execution environment. That is why you're seeing this only a single execution plan. Usually if you have more than one, then you'll see those execution plan. All of them like uh, if you have mm -hmm. 17 or 18, even you still have all of them uh, uh, available in this particular report. So if you do not want to, uh, you know, do uh, you know do some uh, um, do some kind of command line work mm. and you want to save some time so you can go and either generate sql t report or sql hc okay okay, okay sir. all right so if i see this execution plan uh, i can uh, I, I can directly jump to this point because the time is one th one minute 30 second the rest correct. of all within single correct, correct. absolutely and, and, if you uh, go up, just show me the header of this execution plan. Right? OK. And now can you see you? It started providing details about the estimated rows, estimated byte, and S, uh, temporary usage, temporary specification estimate, right? Along with the est time estimations as well, right? Not the actual now, rows. Exactly, not the A rows, of course. But yeah, uh, uh, I'll check into, uh, into that, no problem. Because again, that is not the default way how the execution plan was generated by this report. So you there are some special methods, or special flags which you actually use in order to get A rows and E rows both at the same time or all of the columns in the execution plan. So I, I yeah, of course, I'll update you on that. No problem. Okay. Yes, but yeah, something that where you need to check is this step 130. Yes, window sort. Correct. Okay. Uh, OK, so right. we need to check this where the window sort actually happened. Correct. Right. All okay, right, sir. OK, I think we Any need to go questions? ahead. No, sir, not from my. Anyone else? Any questions before I go and uh, switch to my presentation? Uh, no, sir. Uh, we have a detailed conversation here only. <laughs> OK, <laughs> all right. All right, friends. So, so let me go and uh, I think we were there. Uh, we were here on this slide number 17. Last day, yes. Mm. OK, guys, so now we are confident. In fact, we have live seen how to generate the SQL HC report and what are our important areas where you need to go and check. So of course, the primary purpose of generating a SQL HC report or a SQL T report is to save your time. Like, for example, if you are doing a firefight, right? If you are dealing with any performance problem in your hand, so so and time is very crucial. It's the essence at that point because uh, even a single minute or a second matters a lot, right? Because if uh, the system is suffering and is stressed, so you are getting continuous continuous calls, and you are 
yourself is on the bridge and people asking all so many questions from you. So it's really you at that point of time do not have sufficient time or you know the that luxury to go and write the complex query live on the database and check the record. So it's always good and a best approach in fact to generate SQL T and if that's not possible generate at least SQL HC report. It will provide you all of the statistics, all of the runtime information, observations and uh, uh, object level statistics and execution plan. Everything you'll have handy within a within, within a minute or two, right? Uh, 